plus six review after one week. Now I've been using this phone for a full week, SIM card in the device and really heavily each and every day. And I've really been enjoying it. And we're gonna really break it down here. I am ready for a full review here. And this is gonna serve as my standalone review. I still have some camera stuff to do with this device. I also still have to do some, you know, comparisons with the 5T, for example, the Note 8. I got some other videos coming on this device, but this is the review here. And let's begin by talking about that design. Now on the front of the device, the first obvious thing we're gonna talk about is the notch. The notch is at the top of the OnePlus 6, but this notch doesn't really cut into your video and it doesn't really cut into text when you're reading on websites and things like that. So it doesn't really flow with the screen. It's just kind of a cutout at the top that you know just gives you a little more screen on the right and the left where you would pull down your little toggles tray up there. Now, uh, also we're gonna talk about the fact that this only has a single speaker at the bottom, but it does give you a headphone jack. It also gives you USB-C and you know, like I said, a mono speaker here. It does have a microphone hole there as well. And off to the left side, you do see yourself a SIM card tray. We also do have the volume rockers. And on the right, we do have a silent switch as well as the power button that turns it off. Now, they did move the silent switch, like the switch to move the vibrate, you know, silent ringer. They moved it from the left side over to the right side, no problem. It really hasn't bothered me at all. And actually, I kind of like it better on the right side because that's where you're usually gonna be hitting the power button, changing your volume. It's just a little bit more intuitive, I feel like. Now, because of the notch, it was able, OnePlus was able to stretch this display even further. So you have a bigger screen to body ratio here. As a matter of fact, it's 83.8 screen to body ratio, which is actually very high. It's I think it's a little higher than the iPhone 10 if I'm not mistaken. And also you have a smaller bezel at the bottom now of the OnePlus 6. So this really does feel like a very immersive display on the OnePlus 6. Now on the back, it's just a very beautiful, shiny piece of glass on the OnePlus 6. And they moved the fingerprint down a little bit. It's not as high and that camera's moved to the middle. So it's kind of looks like a little bit like a Galaxy S9. I don't like the fact that they removed the swipe gesture on the fingerprint scanner. We'll talk about that later. And the OnePlus logo is in the middle. At the top, there's really nothing to speak of, but a little microphone hole and nothing else. Housed within that notch is a camera and you do have an earpiece for, you know, talking or hearing people talk on the phone. And also this camera is, is what does the face unlock. There's no like biometrics in this camera up here, no sensors like you see on the iPhone 10. So it's not super secure when it comes to that. But overall, that's the design of the OnePlus 6. To me, this is a mashup of the Galaxy S9 Plus and the iPhone 10 on the front, but not quite as nice as either of those phones, I think, on both, because the rear of the OnePlus, unlike the Galaxy, has a hump camera. So the camera's humped, unlike, you know, the flat camera you see on the S9 Plus. Also, the fingerprint not as in quite an ergonomic location as I would say the, you know, prior 5T. Then on the front, we don't have the full, you know, screen to the bottom like the iPhone 10 has. So it's not better than I think any of those designs on the whole, but it kind of gives you the best of all of them mashed into one package. And then you got the software that's like the Pixel. So, you know, you got Oxygen OS obviously on here, but it's very close to a Pixel. So very nice mashup of different phone ideas in one device, and it makes for a stellar experience. All right, so talking about the build quality, I've had it in a case for the better part of every time I went out. This does come with a smoked, like carbon looking color case gray in the box. So you do get a case. You don't have to buy one if you don't want one, but it's a rather flimsy, cheap, case so i would recommend you get one of those one plus series cases like i did i got the nylon model as a matter of fact i'm gonna go ahead and put it on here so you can see how clean it does look in this one plus nylon case it's really nice and uh, the other colors are awesome too but yeah they got some nice cases for this device. So I would definitely recommend picking up one of these to go along with your purchase. It still comes in at less than all those phones with a couple of cases added on. It's still cheaper than most other phones. So I would recommend that. Now it doesn't have any scratches, but I did get a little nick here up at the top right corner on the aluminum. I bumped into something and as you can see, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. Yeah, it is right there. You can see this little nick. I tried to wipe it down, but it's still there on the OnePlus 6. So it did get nicked up a little bit there. But you know what, it's my fault. I bumped into something, but that just goes to show that none of these phones are perfect. And you're gonna need yourself one of these, especially if you get this mirror black one, because 
this one is reflective as ever this is just like the one uh, the iphone 7 plus jet black in terms of reflection and i didn't even like that one so i'm, I'm not exactly sure why i picked up the mirror black i should have known it was going to be pretty difficult to get shots of this phone on camera because it's so reflective but they got that white model that's a little bit cleaner and probably a little bit you know nicer than this one in terms of not having that reflection and having to clean the fingerprints all the time so on the front it has gorilla glass 5 it's 177 grams so it's about iphone 10 weight and you know it has an aluminum frame so overall the build quality feels solid i don't feel like it feels quite as premium as the galaxy s9 or the iphone 10 but it still feels premium than a lot of phones that are under its price point so there's nothing in its price point that's really touching it in the build quality so very nice build quality i think it does need a case as does all glass phones but it should hold up well if you're deciding to get one of these and you're afraid about build quality just get a case you'll be fine with the oneplus 6 it also comes with a screen protector installed out of the box as well so let's talk about that display. Now, the first thing I know a lot of people are going to say is, where's that wallpaper from? This is from Owen Thompson from the United States. He did upload this photo to the OnePlus community. And I wanted to use one of these photos because it's nighttime. It's a sunset. It just kind of goes with the vibe of the time of this video that I'm launching this video. But if I hit wallpapers, what's really nice is that the OnePlus does feature like it's little few wallpapers here. But the whole community is constantly uploading beautiful photos from their OnePlus 6 and you're able to download these and install them to your device. So if you love wallpapers, you don't even need a wallpaper app. You know, people across the OnePlus community are sending out wallpapers constantly. So that's an awesome feature to have for this device. But back into the display, we're talking about a 1080 here by 2280 pixel resolution, 19 by nine aspect ratio and 402 pixels per inch. So. What does that mean? That means you basically have a full HD panel with a newer aspect ratio that's different from the past OnePluses. It's very close to the one you've seen on the 5T, but I'm talking about like the OnePlus 5, the 16 by 9 displays. Now this display also does have very good viewing angles and it gets very bright, easily legible outdoors. Now one area where it doesn't quite seem flagship is its sharpness. It's not at the level of the panels that you'll see on the Galaxy Note series or the Galaxy S series. Those sharper, those panels are sharper than the OnePlus 6. So, but you do have screen calibration modes in here, allow you to change it between sRGB, DCI-P3 adaptive modes and custom colors to your liking. So this is a really awesome feature to have. You can see if you look at the kid or let's just go to something more colorful, look at that cloud or the sky. Now you can see how it's just changing that temperature of color. So depending on what you like, you're gonna be able to find it here for the display. Also within this display, you have a reading mode that turns this display black and white for when you're reading and basically you can pick any app that you wanted to do that in and it will turn that color. For example, if I put a PyGeek, a news reader app, and I go into a PyGeek, it's gonna turn the whole display black and white. So this is a nice feature for people who wanna kinda of have a little e-reader on their smartphone and then when you come out of it, it will turn right back to the color mode. Hopping back over into display settings, you can see you also have a night mode, which is basically what every phone has now that allows you to cut out the blue light at nighttime. And that's about it. Also, the notch display you can hide. So if we come home, you could see it's hidden. It's a lot cleaner. Overall, I think that this display is not only beautiful, it's also feature rich. So very nice display. I think that it just doesn't get the top honors because it doesn't have the highest resolution. But other than that, most people I don't think are gonna have a problem with it. And on a scale of one to 10, I think this is a solid eight out of 10 when it comes to display, but a very strong eight, not a cheap eight, a very strong eight. All right, guys, so we have arrived at the software portion. Going down, you can see you do get Android 8.1.0 out of the box with Oxygen OS 5.1.5 skinned on top of Android. Eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage here for this device. Now, the software on here, you know, it's like a Pixel, but with a few added features in my opinion. Also, the icons are a little bit different. I still find the Pixel to be a little bit cleaner than Oxygen OS, but Oxygen OS adds a few things that make it still clean like a stock device, but gives you some things that you might be missing on that device. For example, if we go into gestures, or not gestures, buttons here, we go to navigation bars and gestures. You have navigation gestures, which is something you don't have on the Pixel. You can hold in the middle and swipe through your applications and then swipe away. 
Now, if you're in the application, let's go here and then you swipe this way, you can go back and then over here, you can go back as well. So going into settings one more time, let's check out the software a little bit more. You also have things like hide the navigation bar. So if we go into buttons again, you can just hide the navigation bar when you're in applications. If you prefer to have your toggle keys, this is something I wish the pixel had. Now you can also leave it at fixed. If you just like your buttons, the stock way they've always been. And I mean, just look at these features, home button features here. You have turn off screen voice, open shelf. I mean, there's so much going on. If we go into double tap action, you can do things here. You can custom assign things. I mean, this is stuff you could only do on a site on a Jamad based device back in the day. So let's go down. You can see your back button has options as well. You could change the font, but there's one thing here that I don't like about the OnePlus. They remove that swipe to pull down your notification tray. I, I don't get it. Like, why would you remove that? That's so nice of a feature, especially on these ergonomic fingerprint locations where you can, you don't have to, you know, bring your thumb up. I just don't get why OnePlus removed that, but I'm sure that's going to come back in a future update. Now, status bar one thing i also don't like is the fact that there's no battery percentage oneplus claims they're going to bring that to the next update as well so i don't have it yet but no battery percentage you still have to do like on an iphone 10 where you have to scroll down to see your percentage i don't like that about this device but i do like that you can go ahead and change your battery style to like a circle or you can hide it if you want so that's cool you can also display your network speed and then if you scroll down you got your basic device settings we're not going to talk too much about those and then just the personal stuff down here so this phone while i think it's clean it can be complex as well software though is stunningly smooth very fast there's just like no lag on this phone no matter what you're doing. I know a lot of people say, well, swiping is not going to show no lag. Well, we can go into some applications and you could just see the blistering performance of the OnePlus 6. Everything just runs extremely quick, no matter what that application is. It just works, the OnePlus 6. So really love the performance you get here. Snapdragon 845 with eight gigabytes of RAM, definitely not going to choke this phone up. So those people who are doing a lot of things at once on their phone, multitasking a lot all day, they're fast people. You're going to love this phone. It can definitely keep up with you. And this whole marketing thing on the box, the speed you need, that's actually quite true. That's not just some marketing mumbo. That actually is true. This phone has definitely got the speed you need. All right. So let's discuss that camera. We're talking about a dual camera here, 16 plus 20 megapixel sensor. And this device does have a nice large sensor, actually larger than a sensor in a lot of other devices. One over 2.6 inch is a pretty nice size. You also have a one F 1.7. So pretty good in low light EIS and OIS a first for, you know, the latest one pluses, they had it on one of the older devices at OIS, but it's back here for one plus six. And you do have your typical, you know, 1080p 60, but you do get 4k at the 60 mode as well. So that's really nice to see at a device at this price point. That's something you don't see at most mid rangers is 4k 60. And that can be the selling point here over other devices if you're into video now photo here we do have the ability to go to some easy resolutions 19 by 9 which is the full device you also do have the 4x3 which is your standard high resolution shot and then you have the 1x1 for Instagram sharing now this software as I mentioned in my detailed camera review I want you to check that out if you really care more about the camera I give you more details show more samples link up above link down below very clean software and like I said I already did a detailed camera review on this, so I don't want to go so far into that here. We'd just be wasting time because I already did that. Check that one out, but check out these samples if you don't have time to do that, and you can make the decision for yourself if this camera is worth it. But for video, you want to check out my detailed camera review.
All right, so I want to talk about storage on the device. 16 gigabytes I've used already out of 128. 116 gigs, and I use that many. Not all of them have been used. You do have to have a little bit of storage from the software. I had about 120 when I first got this phone, maybe a little bit more, but I don't find it to use that much storage when just taking photos. What I really wanted to bring this up for is the value proposition when it comes to that storage game here. We're talking 256 gigabytes of storage on the one plus six for $629. I mean, that is insane. That kind of storage for less than $700 iPhone for 256 gigs. Let's talk about that. Cause that's one of the only phones that offers that the galaxy S nine plus both those phones at 256 gigs is going to be around 900 or so dollars, maybe even more. So this is a fantastic value when it comes to the storage you're getting for the price. All right, so talking about the battery life, right now I sit at 60%. I've been using this phone for a few hours now. I was using GPS to track my cycle ride earlier, and that was eating through the battery. But I don't have any screenshots of my actual usage, but I can tell you my experience with it so far, and it's been pretty good. You know, it gets me through the day, but really the standout feature is dash charging. We all know that OnePlus 6 is shutting it down when it comes to the speed of charging. Same with all the other OnePlus devices before it. This phone just is very fast to charge. It's faster than the Galaxy S9 Plus. Now, there's only one phone that I've seen that charges faster than the OnePlus 6, and that's the Huawei P20 Pro. That supercharger is nasty. It's so fast, nasty in a good way. Not, you know, not the nasty you're thinking about. Nasty in a good way. So it's very very fast now the oneplus 6 also doesn't give you wireless charging though but has that really matter not to me because wireless charging number one is not as fast as fast charging it's not even as fast as standard charging it's one of the slowest methods of charging number two it creates an, another hassle in your life you got to hold something you know on your table or have another thing taking up space it's not as you know portable like a charger you just plug in the wall you just put it in charge it's ready to go with the wireless charging pad you got to set it up you know place it in the right spot make sure that the phone contact points hit the wireless charging now of course the next one plus is probably going to have wireless charging but i think you're going to be fine with that dash charger that's going to impress you more than having the ability to place your phone on a pad now i'm not saying that you one plus shouldn't have included it it would have been nice but i'm saying that what they did include is enough for me at this price point all right guys so we have arrived at the audio portion of this video now the oneplus 6 is a mixed bag as i talked about last year with the galaxy s8 plus and prior oneplus phones before it this phone has a mono speaker so that means one speaker easy to cover this is something that flagship phones have been going away from and it's kind of understandable here for the price of this phone but at the same time they could even throw in even a cheaper speaker up here just to give it that dual sound now i think that you know having that one speaker definitely makes us feel like not the latest flagships you know best phone of the year type stuff but you know it does have a headphone jack so that kind of makes up for it but again i still would love to see even if it's a cheaper not quite as loud of a speaker as the other flagships at least put one up at the top so for me it's a 50 50 when it comes to audio but headphone jack lovers you at least get to retain that on your device but i'm gonna go ahead and test the speaker phone now the audio in my particular video is not the loudest audio on any on any video but i shot it around in the 90s like 95 or so decibels so let's see what it does get so let's talk about the improvements here basically you have a dual camera here 16 megapixel plus 20 megapixel so I maxed out there at 95, but I've seen it as high as 99, 100. It's a pretty loud mono speaker. It's not that low. So pretty good speaker. It's just, man, when you have one, you just really want to. That's just the way I can put it when it comes to the speaker phone on the OnePlus 6. Okay, so I've been making a lot of calls with this phone as well in the past week, and I have to mention call quality. Now, first of all, I don't really like the keypad on the OnePlus or the Pixel the stock keypad, I just think it's too small, the numbers. I wish they'd make those numbers a little bit fatter, a little bit larger, because not everybody's going to dig these small numbers. But anyway, that's a personal thing. Right here at the top, I want to tell you that the reception has all the band support for the U.S., so it's been 
on point. Haven't lost signal nowhere. Very solid performer when it comes to its network reliability and signal strength, as long as you're using a GSM network, which is what this phone does support. Now, in terms of the actual quality in the phone call itself, here is where I had a problem. When I was actually in the phone call, a lot of people would say, I can't hear you, man. I cannot hear you. Hello. Hello. Hey, are you there? Hello. I'm talking, hello. You, you know what I'm saying? Yes, that happened quite a few times here on OnePlus 6. Now, OnePlus is actually aware of the phone call sound issues, and they're going to be fixing that, they claim, in the next update. But I do have to mention more than any other phone this year that I've reviewed, this phone has been one of the worst for phone call. Unfortunately, I can't give it a great phone call experience based on what I've seen so far. Also, the speakerphone, people have been having troubles hearing me as well. So the microphone that you're going to talk in down here might not be the best. So if you're that type of person who makes phone calls a lot and you rely on this application a lot, which is a lot of people, you know, this is going to be, this might be the deal breaker. I'm going to be honest with you straight up. If you want the best phone call quality, you do not want the one plus six. So this could be a deal breaker, but don't get me wrong. I don't want you to get this belief that it doesn't work. I've been able to make phone calls. I've been able to talk to people. I haven't had a lot of dropped calls, nothing like that. It's just the quality itself overall. So on a scale of one to 10 for the phone call quality, it gets a six out of 10 in my book. So that brings me on to the text messaging experience. Now it comes with the Google keyboard out of the box, which I love. I think it's going toe to toe with the iPhone for the best keyboard on the planet. But actually, personally, I would give Google Keyboard that crown because it gives you swipe and a very accurate one nonetheless. Now, I bring this up because a lot of phones like the Galaxy S9 Plus, the S9, for example, have curved displays. OnePlus gives you a flat display, making it easier to type. However, the 19 by nine aspect ratio is slightly more narrow typing than the 16 by nine. So if you're coming from like a OnePlus 3, 3T, OnePlus 5, or you're coming from like an iPhone 6 Plus, phones like that, they're wider. They're gonna feel more comfortable. You're gonna have to adjust your palms to, this is actually better for the one-handed typers. And you do have the ability to move this keyboard off to the right in a one-handed mode as you can do on any Google keyboard. So that's nice to have there on the OnePlus 6, but you don't have any one-handed mode for the whole system, so that kind of sucks. But at the same time, because you have that eight gigs of RAM, the Snapdragon 40, 845, texting never lags. Like, you can type as fast as humanly possible and this phone will keep up. So the texting experience overall has been great. So a couple quick notes before we get into the conclusion, this does support Bluetooth 5.0, which just makes everything faster when connecting to Bluetooth handsets and devices. And it's been very reliable in my experience. It also has a GPS glow NAS. It does have BDS as well as Galileo. So what that basically means that mumbo jumbo is GPS worldwide should be pretty accurate no matter where you're taking your one plus six. So that's a great thing if you're a traveler with this device. And also this doesn't have a water resistant rating, but it does give you active noise cancellation. If you are using a dedicated microphone with that 3.5 millimeter headset jack. So also I do want to mention the 3,300 milliamp hour battery on this device because we talked about battery, but I didn't actually mention the size of the cell and that's it. You know, when it comes to the specifications, I just want to clean up a few towards the end of this video. Let's get into the final conclusion. All right, so the OnePlus 6, the final conclusion is in, is it a flagship killer? And the answer is no. The OnePlus 6 is not a flagship killer because it does a lot of things that all these flagships do, but it doesn't do any of them better. Let me explain. It has a display on the front that's very similar to the iPhone 10 with its notch. It can hide the notch like Huawei did with the P20 Pro. So it copied there, in my opinion. On the front, because it has gestures, again, it feels closer to an iPhone 10 than any other Android phone before it. Flip it over to the side, you have a silent switch, again, like an iPhone experience. On the back, we get a jet black-like color on this device and you also get a glass build like a galaxy s9 plus has the feel of an s9 plus on the back camera almost looks identical you do but it doesn't have a flat camera design so it's not better again on the design on the rear at the bottom you do have a headphone jack something that you find on the galaxy as well on this device, you don't have water resistance, which definitely takes it out of contention as the best phone you can buy because there's no water resistant rating for this device. And then you have software that 
closely resembles what you're going to get on a Google Pixel 2 XL with a few add-ons that are supplied by Oxygen OS. And it gets software updates more frequently than a Galaxy, but definitely not longer than an iPhone. So again, if you think about everything I just said, all of these features are close, but none of them reign supreme over the top, you know, flagships on the market. For example, the software to me is not as great as the Google Pixel software, so it doesn't win over that. It doesn't kill the Pixel there, but I think it has a better overall design in terms of the way it feels in the hand. It's more comfortable to hold. It has a nice design display, but again, a lot of people argue because it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, the iPhone X is the win there. Its camera tries to be a slow-mo feature. It has a 480p FPS, but it doesn't go slower than the Galaxy S9 Plus, and it can't win in the low light department. Like I say, the OnePlus 6 is a mashup here. It's a mashup of many it's a jack of all trades, but the master of none. However, at the price point, it's the master of value. It's the best phone I think money can buy right now as the recording of this video for the price you're gonna pay. As a matter of fact, if you're looking at a $250, $300 phone, skip that out, get an extra 250 and buy the OnePlus 6 and that's all she wrote. It's a really good device for this price point. Anyway, that wraps it up for me. What are your thoughts on the OnePlus 6? Did you get one? Are you picking one up? Also, I want to mention great accessories are available for this device too. They also came out with their new little headphones, their little $70 Bluetooth headphones. I might review those if you guys want to see them. And uh, let me know your thoughts again. What do you think? Is the OnePlus 6 worth it? Are you picking one up? Do you have one? Are you watching this review on your OnePlus 6?